Welcome back to Monster Tamer, a 2D Pokemon-like RPG created Phaser 3. Uh, previously, we worked on adding in collisions to our world scene, and we used a JSON file that actually exported out from Tiled. Uh, if you missed the previous videos, there will be links to the video description to get source code up to this point, as well as complete source code for this video. There will also be a link to the previous videos if you'd like to catch up, so let's get started. Alright, so now that we have our basic collisions in place, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to pause working on our code and we're going to take a look at Tiled, uh, which is a free and open source uh, full feature level editor. And this is a very powerful tool for creating your own maps uh, for your games. Uh, so the editor allows you to use tile sets to create your levels. Um, and you can also add in metadata to your level, which then you can import into Phaser and use that metadata to do various things. An example of this is how we used layers to go ahead and create our collision layer, and then we use that layer data uh, in Phaser to know which tiles our players should be able to go through. Uh, and you can do much more. You can create your own custom classes for adding your own properties, uh, which is something we'll do for our NPCs. Uh, we can add in interactive objects and add custom properties. So, uh, for example, our signpost, if we interact with it, we'll know what message to display and much, much more. Uh, so uh, Tiled, like I said, is free. It is open source. And so in the description of this video, there will be a link to uh, Tiled, as well as the Tiled download over on itch.io. So one thing to note, uh, this won't be a full in-depth tutorial on Tile. This is just going to go over the basics that we need for our game and how we can go ahead and create a level that, and how we can go ahead and use Tile to create a level like we are using right now. Uh, so to get started, if you can go ahead and go to the mapeditor.org or follow the link in the description of the video, what we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and download Tile. It's available for all the major operating systems. Uh, so when you download, you just want to choose the appropriate installer uh, for Windows, Mac, or Linux. And so after you've downloaded Tile, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and download some assets we'll be using to build our level. Uh, so uh, in the description of this video, there's going to be a direct download link to this Monster Tamer Tiled Assets zip folder. And so the zip folder has the tiled project that we'll be using in the final version of our game, as well as the tile sets to build our uh, current level. And so for these next uh, few videos, uh, we'll be using these assets to build our level. Um, however, you can take the basics that we cover here and you can use your own tile sets to build your own level and as long as you follow the same naming conventions you'll be able to take your level and use it inside the uh, your own version of the game. Uh, so real quick there are going to be a few new uh, assets that we'll be using uh, that we've not used before. Now, a few of these will be from Axel Arts. So we've used some of his assets before for our characters and one is going to be this planes tile set here. Uh, we'll be using the grass planes and some of the trees to build our initial level. And there's also this beach set here we'll be using to build some of the lake piece over by our town. And then finally, we have this retro RPG building pack, and we'll be using this to build out some of the initial buildings in our uh, town. Uh, so this was actually created by the Pixel Nook. So I just want to go ahead and give credit to both the Pixel Nook and Excel Art for these assets that we'll be using. All right, so after you've downloaded the assets, uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and open up Tiled, and you should be taken to a view like this. Uh, so one thing to note is for this series, I'm using Tiled 1.10. Uh, so I do recommend using at least that version or later uh, if you are going to follow along. Uh, so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're just going to go ahead and open our existing project. So, uh, so inside that zip folder, there should be a variety of tile set assets. So these are going to be the spreadsheets that we're using in our game. And there should be this level JSON. So this is going to be the final export of our game once we've finished building our level. And then we'll have our tiled project in session and then find the tiled level itself. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the tiled project file. And what this file will do, this is just a project file that keeps track of all of the custom classes, uh, any tile levels we create, uh, our current uh, tile sets, and all of that metadata, and it kind of ties it together. So then that way, when you leave tiled, you can come back to where you were, and you'll have all of that data. Uh, so before we dive deeper, we're just going to be taking a look at an example of the final uh, level that we can go ahead and create. 
All right, so just a few things to call out. So in tiled, uh, the left panel here, this is going to be all of the metadata tied to your tiles and your current level. And so this is where you'll be able to view things like custom properties on individual tiles. Uh, so as an example, if I click on like these objects here, you'll see they have their own custom properties and they have their own custom class. And then up on the toolbar, this left-handed side right here, these are all of the uh, tools that you can use uh, for creating your level. And they're really tied to the terrain and your sprite sheets that you've created versus the tools on the right after this divider. These are all gonna be tied to objects uh, that you'll be adding to your game. And so in Tiled, uh, one of the uh, really great features of it is layers. And what layers allow you to do is you can group related tiles together. And then that way later you can use that metadata to do things like add a collision layer. Uh, so in Tiled, you could just have one layer with all of your tire set images because it is 2D. And it will work great for a level. However, if you want to have additional metadata, this is where you can have a layer that'll do that. Um, or you could do also an object layer. And so in Tile, there are a few different types of layers. And your most basic is your Tile layer. And so your Tile layer, this is how you'll be able to go ahead and paint tiles to your level. And so how that works is after you've added a sprite sheet, you can go ahead and grab one of your tiles. And then you can use one of your tools to go ahead and paint to your level. Uh, so as an example, if I just go ahead and create this tile layer here, and now if I try painting, you'll see now on this layer, I've created these sprites. And then what I can do is I can lock that layer so I can't modify it later. Uh, you can go ahead and hide it. So if you want to view the other layers and so on and so forth. Uh, so in addition to the tile layers, you have your object layers. And so in tiled, what an object is, this is just a way for you to add additional metadata to your game. Um, and then that way you can load in that metadata and you don't have to hard code it uh, in your actual game itself. Uh, so a good example is if you're making a map, maybe you want to define a spawn point, you could use an object to do that. And so in tiled, uh, your objects are just these basic shapes, or you can have images or even just one of your tile images used and you can add that to your map and then once you do that you can actually add additional metadata to that object and it's meant to just represent that data and so a good example is if i wanted to add a spawn point i could go ahead and place this on my map i could add in custom pop properties and then now when i export out my map i have my initial layers with my map data and then i can load in my object layer to go ahead and place my player game object at that position and so one thing to keep in mind is your naming in tiled is going to be very important when you want to import your data into phaser because uh, basically everything we do inside tiled is going to be exported out into that json file and so this is really important in phaser 3 when you use the built-in methods for loading in your tiled level uh, because you'll need to know those properties in order to load the appropriate data uh, so just as an example if we can come back to our code real quick uh, the level.json file that we've loaded before um, basically when site here this is going to be all of the metadata tied to our final level in tiled and so one of the main properties is going to be your layers and your layers is just an array of objects and on those objects they reference the name of our layer so like we have ground we have building and water and back in tiled these are going to be associated to our various layers here Likewise, we're going to have layers for our object layers. And so you'll see here we have this layer. Our name is NPC. And under that layer, we also have our various objects. And so for our individual objects that we've added to this particular layer, we'll have that metadata as well. And as well as the custom properties that we've added. In addition to that, all of the images that are used to build our level, we're going to have a reference to that in the path of where that file is actually located. And so in Phaser, we also need to load in those assets. We're going to use those to draw out our individual layers uh, when we create them in Phaser 3. All right, so now that we've reviewed some of the high-level pieces of Tiled, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to start building out our level. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and close the existing project, and we're going to go ahead and start from scratch. All right, so what we'll go ahead and do is we're going to make a new project. We'll start from scratch. Uh, so I'm just going to make a new folder on my desktop, and I'm going to call this Monster Tamer Tiled Project Demo. And then what I'm going to do inside here is we need to go ahead and name our project. So I'm just going to call this Monster Tamer 
And we'll go ahead and hit save. All right, so it looks like nothing's actually happened, but what Tiled has done is it's registered our current session and our current project to use that working folder. And so now to actually create a level, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and create a new map. And so when you go ahead and define your map, uh, this is where you can define how big you want that map to be. Uh, if you want it to be infinite, so you can just keep building out an infinite level. And then you can define the uh, width and height of your actual pixels. And so the first thing is and for your orientation, I will be using orthogonal, but you can also create isometric maps using tiled. Uh, your format, we're going to go ahead and leave this as CSV, but they do have other file formats. Um, but for Phaser 3, we want to go ahead and do the uh, CSV layer format. And then your rendering air, uh, order, this will just determine how tiles are rendered uh, in the exported out data. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave this at write down. Uh, we don't need to modify that. All right, so for the tile sets we'll be using, what we'll want to do is we're going to want to use 64 by 64 for our tile size. Uh, for the final map, we're going to have 34 pixels by 20 pixels. Uh, but what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to bump this down, and we're just going to use a uh, smaller tile set for while we're building our demo level. And so I'm just going to go ahead and bump these down so we have a smaller working space while we build out our demo level. And so I'm just going to do 10 by 10. So if we go ahead and hit OK, we should be taking it into our editor where we can actually start editing our map. All right, so now that we have our canvas for creating our level, uh, what we'll want to do is we actually need to load in our tile sets that we want to use to use those sprites to paint to our level. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on New Tile Set. And what we can do is we can either import in a collection of images or we can use a sprite sheet based on a single image. And so we'll do that tile set based on an image. One of the important things you'll want to do is make sure you click on embed in map and what that's going to do that's going to embed the metadata that we need in phaser uh, so then that way when we load in our level everything's associated together and then what we can do is we can click on browse and in our assets folder that we've downloaded uh, what we can do is we can grab one of our assets and so what we'll do is we'll start with our basic planes and so if we click open what that's going to do it's going to populate a name for us we're just going to use the default name and so when you import your sprite sheet, um, if you have a different tile within height, you'll want to go ahead and specify that here. And if they have margins or spacing, we'll modify that here. Because these settings are going to be used when tiled imports this image and it breaks it up into individual frames. Um, so if these are not set correctly, what will happen is your image won't be divided up correctly. So as an example, if I change this to like five and now I hit OK, You'll see now when tiled breaks up my sprite sheet into our individual frames, it's not cut properly. And so we have this overlap here. And so what we'll want to do is we're just going to delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and re-import that image. And we'll reset this back to zero. And so for this initial image, we'll want 64 pixel by 64 pixels. And so now we hit OK. What tiled's going to do is now it's going to take that sprite sheet and it's going to add it down here. And now we have our individual frames that we can select to now go ahead and paint onto our level. And so one of your most basic tools is going to be your stamp brush. And what that allows you to do, you can select a single sprite or multiple sprites, and then you can go ahead and just stamp those onto your level. Um, and so one thing to note is kind of like your canvas, when you have a single layer and tiled, and so when you draw over an existing tile, uh, you're basically replacing those individual pixels. And so what will happen is, as an example, I do this, and now like I do this, if I've tried erasing or just drawing over, because it's just a single layer, all of those pixels get overridden. So same, that's one thing to keep in mind when you want to erase and you're building your level is anytime you draw to that layer, you're replacing those pixels with whatever is defined in that individual sprite. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rectangular select tool to go ahead and select all of our frames. And then that way, and then that way we can use like the backspace key to go ahead and delete all of our existing sprite data. Um, what you can also do with this tool is if you have multiple uh, frames selected is you can just grab one of your tiles and then you can use the paint bucket tool to go ahead and fill in that selection. Uh, so as an example, if I just grab this subset here and let's say if I want to do water, I can now use the paint bucket to go ahead and fill in that selection. I'll go ahead and delete our tiles. All right, so real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and import a few more of our sprite sheets so we have them. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and import grass next. And so this is just a simple sprite sheet that has some variations for our grass so we can add some variation to our background. 
and we'll just hit OK. And then what we should be able to do is now if we come over, we can see our other uh, tile set that we can use. Next, I'm going to go ahead and import in our building. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and import in our bushes. Um, so another simple sprite sheet that has some variations. All right, and so next what we're going to do is we're going to work on creating our initial uh, background ground layer. And so what we'll do is in our planes tile set, we're going to go ahead and grab our grass uh, sprite here. And so what we'll do is we'll use our paint bucket to go ahead and fill our initial layer in. And so this is really great if you have basic tiles you want to fill in really quick. However, um, our background becomes kind of bland because we're just repeating the same uh, tile over and over again. And one of the powerful tools of Tiled is you can use random mode to go ahead and dynamically randomly apply a sprite to a particular area. And this is really good for like backgrounds like your dirt and grass layers because typically you wouldn't have you don't want a repetitive sprite like this. Uh, you want it to be uh, random with some variation. Uh, so a good example here is we'd want to maybe apply oh let me go back to stamp. We want to apply some random tiles like this and maybe some of our twos then that way when we start building out our background it looks a little more natural and it'll just be a little more pleasing to the eye it just doesn't look like it's repeating and so to do that what we're going to go ahead and do is let's go ahead and grab all of our tiles we'll delete those then what we can do is up here on our toolbar we can click to enable our random mode and what that allows you to do is you can select a set of sprites that you want to use and when you go to paint these onto your map, Tile's automatically going to pick a random one when you move over that space to go ahead and apply that sprite to your level. And so what we can do is we can use our rectangle selection tool to go ahead and select our area and we get this random background here. And likewise, if we just spray paint over it over and over again, we can change what that looks like. And so this is really great uh, if you want to generate some randomness uh, in your initial. Um, <clears throat> and so this tool is really helpful if you want to generate randomness like this without having to manually paint it by hand. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to work on adding a few layers to our project. So then that way we can start uh, building out our scene. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we want to click on our layer. And we'll go ahead and call this ground. And so this layer here, this is going to be our simple background that has our ground so of our dirt and our grass. And we'll have it on this layer here. Uh, so once you're done with the layer, one of the main things you'll want to do is make sure you click the lock icon. And then what that does is it prevents you from drawing over that layer. Um, and so what we'll do next is let's go ahead and add in another layer. And we're going to call this one water. And so on this layer, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to go ahead and add a simple. Oh, let's go ahead and import actually our other sprite sheet. Uh, so we'll go ahead and import our beach into our level. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add some water. Uh, so I'm just going to grab this whole set here and oh, let's turn off random mode because we just want to go ahead and paste this whole object. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paste this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few new uh, layers. Uh, so I'm going to do tree and I'm going to do bottom and I'm going to do tree top. And we'll come back to that in a second while we're doing that. I'm going to add another layer for decorations. And I'm going to add one for our fence. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to start decorating some of our scene a little bit here. Uh, so for our fence, we'll just go ahead and grab our fence post here. I'm just going to place these near our water to block it off. I'm also going to block off the top of our scene. I'll lock that layer. And so for our trees, I broke these up into top and bottom because when we draw our sprite to our level, um, as we saw with our layers, we will overwrite whatever sprite that currently exists there if we keep it all in one layer. So if we want to create a scene where we have our trees next to each other, but then have it look like this where the top is in front of the other one, we'll need to do this in two layers. And so what I like to do is if you start at the bottom and then if you hold the shift key and click, what you can do is you can go ahead and duplicate your sprite that you're drawing onto your map. And it's going to go ahead and keep it in a nice straight line. So we can go ahead and do that. And then what we could do is on our tree top layer, we would just have our tree tops. And what we'll do is we're just going to paint those 
over our images here. And so what we'll do is if we hold the shift key, we come all the way down, hold the shift key, come all the way down. We'll have all of our tree tops. Let's go ahead and fix our tree bottoms. So what we'll do is that. And same thing here. All right, so now what we'll do is I'm just going to add one of our big trees to our scene like this. And then for our tree top, we'll select both and do that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and lock those. And so for our decoration layer, this is going to be like simple things like maybe these flowers we'll want to add to our scene. I just kind of spruce up our uh, background here. I'm going to go ahead and lock that. All right, and then what we'll do is we're going to add one more layer. And let's go ahead and call this building. And what we'll do is we'll come to our house sprite sheet and then copy that. And we're just going to go ahead and place our house right here in our level. All right, so now that we have an example level build, uh, that actually brings this video to an end. In our next video, uh, we'll start looking at how we can add in our special like collision layers, adding in our custom types, and then that way we can take our level data and import that over to Phaser. Also, as a reminder, in the description of this video, there will be links to all of the assets and the resources that were used in this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did enjoy the video, please consider liking the video and hitting the bell icon to be notified when the next video in the series is released. For more great Phaser 3 content, please send the links on your screen now.